Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs and today I'm gonna show you guys something really cool that was posted to the Fire Emblem subreddit yesterday. This is a Fire Emblem 8 hack with a built-in randomizer. So, previously if you ever played a randomized run or if you watch any of my randomized let's plays, you have to download a uh, separate software and have to run a Fire Emblem 8 ROM through that. Uh, in order to randomize it, but this hack allows you to randomize it in the menu, and you might be asking yourself, what's the big deal, why not just do it the old way? Uh, this one actually behaves quite differently from regular randomizers, I'm going to be showing you guys right now what I mean. I'm going to uh, displaying a couple chapters for you, and of course, if you want to go try it out for yourself, uh, there's a link in the video description, you can go check it out. Uh, this is version 1.0, there are some bugs in it, I'm going to be explaining them if they show up, so be wary of that, it's not completely bug-free. But the first thing you get uh, asked to do is to randomize the ROM itself. Now, this this first stat is called variation. Now, this is a bit confusing to newer players, uh, but basically this is how random the ROM will be. The higher this number goes, the more random the stats and growth rates and everything will be. Uh, if you try to go below zero, you get a nice little brigand scream. I, I found that oddly charming. So the higher the stat goes, the more randomized the ROM gets. So you go 50%, you're gonna get a pretty random ROM. You go 100%, you're gonna get a completely unstable ROM that might be unplayable. So we're gonna go 50%, I think. That sounds like a nice number. Uh, then you just select whether or not you want randomized thieves or not. Uh, of course, Fire Emblem 8 doesn't feature purchasable door keys, so if you don't get any thieves on your roster, that can be very frustrating, so you might want to go with fixed if you don't want that to happen, but we're going with random because that's fun. Uh, this hack features the skill system used in Void Splits Our Adventure and Staff of Ages. So if you select personal skills, then every single playable unit, and I do also believe every single boss, will have a randomized personal skill selected from the skill pool, which can create a lot of hilarious and sometimes downright overpowered or in some cases unplayable characters. Uh, then you get the generic class. I don't know what, exactly what this does. I think it's how the classes get randomized. I think if you select RNG and you reset the ROM, or if you reset a level, then you get different enemies. I think that's what this does, so we're gonna go with RNG. Then you can select weapon stats. Uh, this will randomize the stats of your weapons, I think in accordance with the variation stats. So since we're running with 50% variation, I think that will mean that our weapons will have about a 50% variance in their stat distribution. So then you can select random items. You can select either from events, chests, neither, or all. We're gonna go with all, so every single item in the game will be randomized, even items we are given in conversations and stuff like that. Then you can select, this is kind of cute, between classic and casual. So if you don't like resetting when your units die, you can play, uh, you can be a casual scrub and select casual. We're not going to do that because we're, 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 I'm like a hardcore Fire Emblem veteran, you know? So, uh, yeah. And also I'm going to make a save state right here. And that's because sometimes when you start the ROM, it freezes. This is a bug that I've noticed during my test run. So we're just going to be doing a save game. Now you can select your name here. I'm just going to say pop. I don't really know what this does. Um, I, I... I could have typed in Manx, but I'm too lazy. So, uh, sometimes when you skip this cutscene, the ROM might freeze, but it didn't this time. I, I don't know exactly what causes it to happen. It's happened a couple times. Um, so, and also, um, the, the classes that are displayed in the cutscenes are actually not the classes that you will see in the game itself. It seems like the ROM randomizes the individual classes in the cutscenes, but they aren't, like, we can we can skip to the Volter scene right here, and you'll see what I what I'm talking about. Um, depending on, so as you can see right here, we can see uh, we can see a spider, we can see a summoner, and a revenant, and then Volter's going to show up right here. But it's actually not going to be his real class that's going to get displayed because for some reason these classes get randomized as well. Also, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Volter looks like he has a, a case of the old purple face. So, um, so sets a summoner here, but I don't think he's gonna be a summoner in the game itself. At least not from my experience. Yeah, as you can see right here, sets a general and Erika's a spider. So let's see what Grado's husband manages to conjure up. We got a dra dragon spear from the event. What the actual? <laughs> Grado's husband? Actually, it's Grado's waifu. What the hell? Alright, let's... Before we take a look at the... I've never seen enemy dancers before. Um, let's take a look at Erica. So, she's a spider. Um, of course, uh, not fantastic units, but they can move in mountains, so there's that. Uh, her bases are alright, I suppose. Nine strength, four speed, not the best, but I've seen worse Erica's. Um, 
Her growth rates are actually pretty good, 85% speed. That's not bad at all. Especially considering her base strength is kind of high and her speed is low. And they're kind of like, uh, the growth rates balance out her stat bases quite nicely. 85% luck as well, that's really good. So of course she comes with a personal skill. Everyone has shove by the way, that's a standard skill that everyone has. Um, Rally move is her personal skill. That's uh, okay. I'll take it. I, that's not the best personal skill you can get, but I, I I'm not gonna complain. And of course the sharp claw. Oh my god, it has 39 hit. That's gonna be awful. And of course we have a dragon spare, which seems to be decent. Then we have Seth the general, and at least uh, donate to circles. Yeah, I think circles everywhere. That's the name of the creator of the sack. I don't think I mentioned that. We got a beastly general, Seth, with 20 defense. That's pretty good. Um, his growth rate seems pretty similar to his vanilla self. A bit higher on the skill, I think. Really good rest, 45% rest growth. And he has a con of 15, which is pretty good. Uh, his personal skill is wind discipline, so plus 10 hit and avoid when hit points are not at max. That's pretty good. And he has provoke, which I do believe is an armor knight personal skill. And then he comes with natural cover, which is a general class skill, I think. So, yeah, Seth's pretty good. Good old Seth, Seth. And the Javelin has decent stats on it, 70. I think it's pretty similar to its vanilla self. Now, <laughs> we, got, we got soldiers, which apparently haven't... That seems to be a bug. They have no skill. We got play... Oh my god, they got Shadow Shot. Are you fucking kidding me? This can't be real. Oh my... What? <laughs> Double shadow shot. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? This can't be real. This cannot be real. Seth's gonna die. Oh wait, I could have rallied movement. I could have rallied movements to get him to the No, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. Anyway, this guy is is really he's he's a good soldier. This guy, this guy knows knows how to play <laughs> triple zero. I'm more worried about those shadow shots though, because there's two of them. Uh, yeah. Yikes. Okay. Well, this <laughs> this certainly uh this certainly did not go the way I thought it would. Does O'Neill attack? No, he doesn't. Okay, that's uh that's a stroke of luck right there. Uh, so O'Neill actually doesn't attack. So this means that we we gotta hit this or else Seth is dead. I think O'Neill moves on the third turn. So um, if we can get to him before that with Erica, wow, an antitoxin. That that's that's really what I needed right now. Thank you, game. Not a big fan of Erica's hit rates, but at least she hits hard. Uh, I wonder why the soldier has zero skill. That has to be a bug. I do know that sometimes when you meddle with stats too much, you, this bug can happen. So... No, I don't think O'Neill... Does he move this turn? If he does, I'm dead. Yep, he does. Alright. Well, that's fucking great. Yeah, I will be the first to die. He looks nice, though. Look at him. Ha! Grotto's husband has uh, really... Really been working out. Come on! Yes! Good job, Seth Seth. <laughs> this is stupid. All right, so um, do we have we do do we have healing on us? We do not. All right, so we're gonna have to get out of the way. Um, there is actually something funny you can do, which I which I uh, learned, um, and that is to push someone up into the mountains. So what you can do is you can you, or you can shove someone up into a peak. To imp oh, actually, come to think of it, we can. Oh no, this is gonna get me killed. Come to think of it, I'm going to get killed pretty much regardless of what I do. Well, at least he's closer now. So you can shove people into the peaks, even though they normally can't move in peaks. And uh, this allows you to... He might still die, though. Nope. I actually don't... What happens if Seth dies in the prologue? I, I don't... Is there, is there a special scene? Or do you just get a game over? I'm actually not sure. So I cannot move out of the mountain, sadly. So I'm just gonna have to do this. Wait, maybe I can use the Dragon Spear? Oh, I could have traded the Dragon Spare. That was kind of dumb. Why didn't I do that? Anyway, I'm just gonna have to risk another hit from the Shadow Shot here. Hopefully, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill me. Yeah, this is a pretty wacky rum. Let's go! Oh my God, fucking hell! Are you kidding me right now? That's great. Absolutely amazing. Well, we can't 
go on without set. So at least I get to show you guys a pretty funny feature. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? You gotta have to. You gotta retype your name if you reset. So from what I understand, the classes, the playable classes, I think will remain the same. But I think that the enemies change. So let's. And we actually, yeah. And you also get run. Oh wow, we got tree dancers this time around. That's fantastic. Um, also, I want to show off the. Okay, dude, please don't tell me they all have shadow shot. Evil eye, shadow shot. Okay, so we got two shadow shots this time around. Um, that is fantastic. Oh, Seth also has a new. Uh, <laughs> he also has a new inventory right now, the killer axe. So if we can. Um, hmm. All right. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rally. Let's see if we can get. Oh, okay, he can actually kill this guy if he hits. There we go. He actually even crits. So you can see the hit rates on the different weapons and stuff, which is kind of nice. As you can see right here. Also, uh, seems like the evil eye does a lot less damage than the shadow shot. So we can do this. And I think I'm gonna do the shove trick. Because I, th I still think he's gonna go for set. Oh, that's right. He has a, he has a boner eye on him. That's interesting. Right. Wow. Okay, and Eric also got a poison claw, which is pretty shit. Look at the stats on that thing. Holy shit. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna have to be Seth Seth that deals with uh, O'Neill again. But at least we got a Vulnerary now, which is kind of nice. And we can poison O'Neill, which is also nice. Wow, this O'Neill does not have the best of stats on him. Hey, we can actually we can actually get the <laughs> we can let him die of poisoning, which is hilarious. Oh my god, <laughs> we're not gonna do that though, because we're not gonna get any experience out of it. Alright, let's turn animations back on. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> oh wow, we got a crit! Do you present- what? How? We got a 2% crit, boys. Alright, we did it, we defeated the prologue. This is gonna be- this is gonna be an interesting run. Let me just tell you that, it's gonna be a very interesting run. All right, chapter one, escape. Let's see what the, see what the enemy squadron looks like. Ay ay ay, Viver Knights. That is not good. This is gonna be an interesting battle scene. <laughs> Bregwood, that's a lot of crit. I think. What the hell? Did you see that? The the dead guy attacked him. All right, so we got Bregwood as a mage. Uh, that actually worries me a little bit. Let's check out his stats. The Thunder has four crit on it. And Bregwood has... Eh, those are not the worst stats I've seen. Spur magic. Adjacent allies deal plus four magical damage. Not a very good... Oh, right, he has focus. I wonder if that played a part in this cutscene. Might have. Um, but we got Vyverns here, which is not great. But I do wonder if we rally movement... Oh my god, this skill is so good. We, we actually get in range of this guy on the first turn. Lovely. Good job, Seth. Seth. I'm, I think the Killer Axe was a, was a better choice, to be fair. Um, better choice than the Javelin. The Javelin just didn't deal a lot of damage. So sometimes, if you get shitty items, uh, you can just restart the map to reroll the seeds. It's a little bit, a little bit like Awakening Lunatic Plus in a sense, uh, that you can just reroll. <laughs> but that also means that if you get an unplayable combination of items, you can you don't have to like re-randomize the entire ROM like you would have previously with a randomized ROM or hack it using hacking tools. But yeah, this is pretty good. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna grow rather fond of this uh, rally movement skill. All right, so Franz is an Erica, I think, and Gilliam's a mage. Let's check out Franz. Oh, that's a Shamshir. It seems to have pretty shitty stats though. Same with the Poison Sword. It's even shittier than usual. So we have Franz as an Erika Lord. And those are some really shitty stats. My god, those are some shitty stats. 4 base strength and 5 speed. My god, this is horrible. His growth rates aren't much better, I'm afraid. Pretty similar to... Actually, they're... Are they worse than Vanilla Franz? They might be. Let's check out his... Oh, it's not Tome Fair. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, this happens when you give everyone a personal skill you can just get something plain and usable like Tome Fair. It's not great. Um, he does have Bond, though, which is a nice skill. I now, he's... France is pretty shit. I don't see any use for him whatsoever. We got Gilliam. He's a mage. Decent stats on him. 8 magic and 4 speed. Not the best. Uh, good magic growth. Wow, 60% defense growth. Is that higher than vanilla Gilliam? I think so. Also, I'm not sure if it's Gilliam or Gilliam. I, I, people get mad no matter what you say, I guess. 
Um, what kind of personal skill did he get, though? Acrobat. All traversable terrain cost one movement. That's actually pretty sick. That means he can run over terrain like it's nothing. Um, wow, look at that. The Thunder Tome seems... It's a little bit inaccurate, but it seems pretty good. Also, his palette looks ugly as shit. Um, but yeah, I guess what we'll do is we'll just... Uh, we'll rally movement on Seth Seth. We'll get him into action right here. There's a bone bone walker arrow dude right here. All right, let's just do this. Uh, of course, we do have those reinforcements that come in. Franz is perma benched. <laughs> I don't see any use for this guy whatsoever. Also, you can see that enemy stats are a little bit wonky. This guy has only 15 base hit points. I think that's because I set the variation rate to 50%, which screws a lot with the enemy stats. But I'm a, I gotta say, I'm a little bit disappointed you can't just flat out increase enemy growth rates because that is one of the things that I really enjoyed doing with randomizers in the past. Also, Seth, what the hell are you doing? I do actually wonder if Seth's gonna struggle a little bit with regret though because I don't think his resistance is fantastic. Like, nothing can harm him physically, but <laughs> his resistance I don't think is the best. Alright, let's check it. Uh, what? No, uh, he has... Yeah, he has four rests, which is not fantastic. Can Erica? No. No, absolutely not. But Gilliam... Can. Nope. Okay. Apparently not. Wonderful. Uh, I, I have to kill this Vyvern. This Vyvern needs to die. I cannot let this Vyvern live. I am low-key worried about Seth running out of killer axes uses, though. But there is an armory in the next chapter, if I remember correctly. So we can probably make some use of that. And France, you can <laughs> you can occupy the fort. That, that's what you're gonna do. Also, you can do this. Shove is a nice skill. I like it. Blink. So let's see if we can get rid of that archer and let's see how dangerous Perguet is. So we got two mages right there and a skeleton. Uh, right, so all mages, yeah, they have uh, focus as their, their skills, so whenever they're alone, they get more skill. So actually, in theory, it would be better for us to leave this guy alive, because he's actually going to increase his crit rate, which is kind of funny. Um, but no, I think, I think he needs to die. 69! So yeah, I can already see that the Thunder Tome is not going to be very reliable. Luckily, Briguette has a Thunder Tome, so let's see how this goes. Um... This is good. This is actually fine. If he crits, then that's fine. I think I'm actually just gonna let him go for Seth. And I'm just gonna stay back. I don't think I'm gonna engage those guys. I'm just gonna see if I can kill Braguet and then seize the throne. Because I want to show off the next chapter. So, Seth actually gets... He, he, he survives with one hit point, even if he gets critted. So this is actually fine. But I can already sense that this is gonna be a tricky battle. We do have a vulnerary though, so it shouldn't be the worst. Um, now, can we take two hits from these guys? This guy does 10 damage. Gilliam has three rests. That's seven. Ah, that's actually fine. If you if we put him on a forest tile, he'll be fine. Franz needs to fuck off though. He needs to fuck off in a big way. Oh shit! I completely forgot about the Bone Walker. Well, that complicates things. Um, I am actually left on exactly enough hit points to not survive this if both of those Thunder Mages hit me now. Also, that guy has an Elfire Tome. Bull sack. I did not- I forgot to check the- lovely, alright, Gilliam is probably dead. Should have gone casual. No, wait. There we go. We're good. We're fine, ladies and gentlemen. We're absolutely fine. So yeah, check enemy inventory. <laughs> Kind of important. Now, Seth, Seth, if you could please hit, that'd be really nice. Ah, that's one hit. Good. Now let's let's do another. Oh, even better. Very Seth. All right, so I'm gonna kill what I can. I don't think I'll be able to kill much though. Um, I think I'm just gonna cease. I, I don't wanna. I don't really wanna test my luck. I do actually wanna test my luck, but I don't wanna do it. Let's just cease and let's continue on to the next chapter. All right. I think we have time for another chapter. We get our five thousand gold right here, and let's continue to the Protector and let's see what Garcia and Ross have in uh, have in store for us alongside Vanessa and Mulder. 
So this chapter is interesting because if Bone, the boss, doesn't randomize into anything that can walk on peaks, you need either a flying unit or a unit that can traverse peaks to get to him. This is was a problem in the Fire Emblem 8 PME, I remember. Uh, look at that, we actually have a Pegasus Knight, so that's fine. So yeah, uh, as you can see right here, <laughs> Ephraim Lords, what the hell? <laughs> that's actually pretty hilarious. Wait, that, does that mean they have Ether? No, they have Bond. Um, so as you can see, Bone randomized into a thief with Anathema. So he's gonna stay here on the, the, on the mountains. I'm gonna have to, actually I either have to send Eric or a Pegasus Knight to get him. So let's check out the new units. We have Boulder. Uh, he's a Bone Walker. Uh, wow, look at those stats though. 10 strength and 12 speed. This is actually pretty good. 30 strength, 40 skill, 45 speed, 30 luck. This is actually a pretty decent unit right here. And is that Rally Spectrum I see? Oh my god, he has Rally Spectrum. This is actually legit insane. He's really good. I mean, as, as good as an archer can be. And Vanessa is a bad boy, apparently. 19 speed though. Jesus. Fire Fang has a little bit less might than I think it usually has, but pretty good hit as always. And Strong Repost when under attack deals plus 3 damage. Hmm. Not a bad personal skill, not the best she could have had, but at least she's fast. And then we got Garcia, who's a Pegasus Knight, uh, with Tan TV. That's his personal skill, I do believe, yeah. So that's a good skill for a Pegasus Knight to have, because they're often flying by themselves. And then we got, I can't check out their growth rates, because they're minions. And we got another Bonewalker Archer, way shittier than Boulder, but he has pass. That's not a fantastic personal skill for an Archer to have, but can occasionally maybe be a bit hilarious, I don't know. Let's see what the villagers give us. Of course, this is random, so if you don't like your rewards... I don't think I'm gonna reset, though. Let's just put it that way. If you don't like your rewards, you can uh, you can restart the map. You can go to these villages again. And a solar brace. Lovely. Um, I think that sells for quite a bit of cash, doesn't it? Not completely sure, but I think so. Um, I got some really shitty units on my team, though. Like, really shitty units. Those Ephraim Lords are just gonna be staying... Oh... All right, Ross, uh, have fun. I, yeah, this is not fun. So, I actually don't know what happens with the dialogue if... No, I think Garcia just goes like, son, you, you suck. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Ross died. Uh, I don't think there's really any way. Like, unless you just reset, Garcia's gonna take some vengeance here. At least Garcia seems like a good unit. But Ross was... I don't think I would have used Ross anyway, to be fair. But Garcia seems decent. Only problem is I think he's gonna go and get himself killed. But Vanessa has potential. Like, Mouth Ducks can be pretty good because of their high movement and ability to double, so... Uh, let's just do this. I'm gonna be using Rally whenever I can to speed up my units. I know that there's going to be some reinforce. I should also shove whenever I have the, the chance to, really. So Garcia's going to win this fight, but if I don't get over to him quickly, I think he's going to get himself killed on the soldier, potentially. But he does have the, the fort to heal him up, at the very least. Alright. Good job. So I'm... I don't... How do you recruit Garcia, though, if you don't get Ross? Is it possible? Wow, two thieves. <laughs> Well, uh, they're kind of stuck there, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're stuck. So, I'm gonna have to actually- oh my god, this is actually really tedious. What I'm gonna have to do now... What I can do is I can shove Gilliam into the mountain and attack this guy, but if I want to get to Bone, I either have to get Garcia... Or I have to... yeah, this is... this is a mess. Yeah, I'm gonna have to climb with Erika into the mountains in order to get them, which is does not sound very enjoyable at all. Also, this guy has a short spear. So as you can see, this is always a risk when you randomize Fire Emblem 8. Honestly, I kind of wish that the hack had some had some changes in place. Like, what you can do is you can like alter Bone's spawn location to have him spawn here or something, just so this kind of shit doesn't happen. But, you know, this is what happens when you randomize a ROM. Now, what do we get from here? We got a, a Devil Axe, lovely. My favorite weapon in the entire Fire Emblem universe. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Boulders. I mean, to be fair, like, 
considering he's shooting at thieves in mountains, this is not bad. So what you do is you shove, shove her into the peak. Now I think you can even shove her further if you want to. Uh, but yeah, 12% hit rate. This is gonna take a while, I'm afraid. This is gonna take a while. Honestly though, I think I've, I've showed off enough of the ROM at this point. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to make this into a Let's Play. Uh, I'm already doing randomized, or I'm already doing the Google Translate uh, related Fire Emblem 8, and I'm, I'm gonna also, uh, the next PME that's coming up is also gonna be Fire Emblem 8. So I'm not really sure if I want to do a uh, randomized run of Fire Emblem 8 right now. I might though, if there's enough interest for it. So I guess smash the like button and give me a comment. Uh, this is gonna have to be done off screen, I think, because this is gonna literally take forever. I think once you get past Bone though, most chapters are relatively safe. Um, I mean, you got Seth to carry you through the game, at any rate, but this is still a very, very unstable ROM. <laughs> Ross dies on the first turn. It's weird. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely go check out this for yourself. Link in the video description. You can go download the randomizer and try it out for yourself. Anyway, my name is Humanx. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.